The Florida Podcast Network, the voice of Florida. This is Gerard with episode number 31 of Florida's Fresh Mix on the Florida Podcast Network, a random mix of Florida's freshest personalities. Listen in. Hey there, this is Amber, the lead content producer of the Florida Podcast Network. Welcome to another episode of Florida's Fresh Mix Podcast. Happy hashtag Fresh Mix Friday. Yes, I'm still trying to make that a thing. <laughs> and with me, as always, is your host, Gerard. How goes it, Gerard? Oh, it goes well. Not only is it uh, Fresh Mix Friday, but it's uh, the Friday heading into a long weekend. And, uh, you know, we love that. Oh, yes, we do love that. And we're going to talk a little bit about what's happening this weekend. But first, let me introduce our guest today, AJ Glover. She is the CEO and founder of Days Staffing Solutions. She's also the co-founder of Cashly Co., which basically is a wellness community that I really want to be a part of. And she dives into all of those great things. But more importantly, Gerard, this conversation, more than any of the other ones that you've had so far, this one is truly a redemption story at its finest. AJ went through the fire many times, got burned, she got charred, she made it out, and now she lives to tell the story that you guys are all about to hear today. So very excited for this one. It's packed with tons of emotion. It's very dynamic in that way. So one minute you might be crying, the next minute you might be laughing because AJ has such a bubbly personality and... uh Yeah, it's just, this is definitely one for the books, for sure. Several of our interviews, we've touched on people's adversity and and we've heard some painful stories. What jumps out to me the most is, um, uh, off the top of my head, is our interview in episode 30 with uh, Liz Ostrzewski and um, also our interview with Patrick McNamara and, and the struggles and the pain that he had to go through in his life that, you know, got him to where he is. But uh, AJ stands out to me as someone who you mentioned she got burned, but she got like burned, drowned, run over sandpaper, like everything. It's like it's easier to kind of be like, you know, what have you not been through? Like it's. Yeah. um, And the contrast between what she's been through and where she is now, it's admirable. It's it's a blessing. It's 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 all the positive things. This is a very exciting conversation. It's tough to hear. And that's why I want to quickly just give a little trigger warning because the topics of domestic violence, domestic abuse, and suicide come up in this episode. So aside from all of those things, it is a pretty encouraging conversation to say the least. No, definitely. I mean, the the words that, I mean, a lot of words stand out to me, but the three that come to mind most prominently at this moment are she's a trooper, she's a survivor, Mm -hmm. and she is bubbly. I mean, she... (laughs) <laughs> she, she's, and she, she's, 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 uh, I don't want to put words in mouth, but you know, she sounds like a, an, the consummate optimist. And I can definitely relate to that. She just keeps moving forward. There's definitely a, um, a difference between the first half of the interview and the second half. And, yes. uh, and uh, it's, it's noticeable because you got to understand what she's been through to better understand where she is now. So. Yeah, for sure. For sure. But before we jump into your conversation with AJ, I wanted to let the people know what we got going on this weekend. So two I things. Something's going on. What, oh, what, yeah. Maybe I forgot. What, what's something important happening? What, what's up with that, Amber? Yeah, l- let me remind you, Gerard. So <laughs> this weekend is the one, the only PodFest Expo in Orlando. Ooh. We love PodFest, even though we've never been there. But I know I will love it. Gerard, I'm sure you're going to love it. Shout out to producer Jemmy for hooking me up with a ticket. And she also got my boyfriend one, which was really sweet. She definitely did not have to do that, but she did. And we greatly appreciate her for that. I'm super psyched. Don't know what to expect besides a lot of community, a lot of new found friends and networking opportunities. So I think it's going to be great. And also Gerard, we're going to meet each other. 
yeah for the first time in uh in person and so yeah no it's 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 exciting uh for many different reasons and shout out to my sister producer jemmy with the hookups and you know i'm going to be completely in her element as as someone who's had the unfortunate burden of living in my shadow as my younger sister this is her world and i i cannot wait to embrace it and i thank her every day whether i you know verbalize it or not let's say at least in my head for <laughs> bringing me bringing me into the podcast world because i absolutely love it and so uh, I'm going to I'm so looking forward to watching her shine in person in that universe. I see her shine constantly uh, on on social media, et cetera. But uh, now that this is going to be her world. So let's I'm just going to sit back and admire and uh, hopefully get to meet some new people and get to meet some people that I love working with, like Amber. And I'll get to meet your man. And, uh, <laughs> you know, it, it will be uh, it will be fun. And. The fact that my um, my nephew is coming along, and I'm sure he will be inspired in many different ways. That's just uh, icing on the cake. Yeah, I I've never met her son before, your nephew. So I'm excited about that. We have a couple other Florida Podcast Network hosts who are going. Craig and David from right. Texpiration. Yes, they were one of your guests or two of your guests, whatever. They will be there. So that's going to be. I'm really lots looking of forward fun. to meeting them. Yeah. Yeah. That was a great interview. What a great energy those guys had. And those yeah. guys are consummate nerds just like me. So, you know, that's that's going to be fun. Nerds unite. We love to see it. Also, another cool thing about this upcoming Saturday, May 28th, it is the official one year anniversary of Florida's Fresh Mix podcast. What? I know. It's been a year. Can you believe it's been a year since we first released the very first inaugural episode of this podcast with wow. Scott Byerster? That is right. That is right. That was that was a great episode. I learned all about uh, his wife, Mystic Michaela, and about auras and a bunch of psychic stuff that I found fascinating and did not understand and a little bit was scary. But it was, <laughs> it was fascinating and I loved it. And then that set the tone for what have been some great interviews. Wow, a year already. Time is fun when you're having flies. Time is what? <laughs> <laughs> I gave you a second to catch it. But <laughs> I was I was see I was I was testing you to see if you were going to notice. <laughs> I don't remember what, whether it was uh, in a in an interview or even no, I think it was in a movie where I heard Jeff Goldblum say that that line and I've co-opted it for myself uh, ever since. Then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. I'm leaving this in here. Anyways, <laughs> let's go ahead and switch gears and let's listen to Jabard's conversation with the founder of Days Staffing Solutions, AJ Glover. All right, all right, all right. Today we are here with AJ Glover. How you doing, AJ? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm doing well. I'm I'm feeling uh, I, I have a lot of anticipation because I, I don't know really how this interview is going to go because you have such an interesting background and you're doing so many diverse things that are seemingly unaligned. But I think that they cater towards, you know, different parts of your personality. And I and I really want to you know dig into that. I want to skip to the end, folks. So you should know that right now I'm talking to an Orlando-based CEO of Days Staffing Solutions. She's also the co-founder of Cashly Co. All right. AJ has also uh, had her own podcast called The Cashly Show. So that is where we are now. And, and perhaps there's more that I don't know yet as far as, uh, you know, with, with AJ, I have no idea what's the newest thing that she's doing these days. <laughs> so that maybe there's more. But now that you know where she is, I want to know where you were. High school dropout. And now you're a CEO. You've been through a lot. And I know that uh, some people are reticent to kind of share their, their story. You're an open book from what I understand. So you, yeah. you tell me whatever you're comfortable telling me. I want to inspire people. So you dropped out of high school. Why did you do that? And tell me, because you, you, you came from, uh, a, a, let's just say, to put it mildly, a challenging upbringing. So Get yes. it, tell, tell as much or as little as you like. It's up to you. Okay, perfect. Thank you. 
So yeah, I did drop out of high school actually on my 18th birthday. <laughs> I left um, and it was actually- Was that purposeful to, on your 18th yes. birthday? Why, yes, why, it was. Why is that? Uh, because I tried to leave the situation that I was in when I was 17 and I ended up having to go back to the home until I was 18. So I purposely waited until my 18th birthday and I was like, I'm 18, I'm out. So oh. Yeah, that's that's what happened. But um, so I have uh, three siblings and we grew up in a very abusive household. So my father passed away when I was, oh, my gosh, I think 13. Um, I met him when I was 12. He passed away when I was 13. My mother um, basically abandoned me and my my siblings and left us with um, a family member who then abused us the entire duration that we stayed with them. And I tried to leave when I was 17 and I, I couldn't, basically they, they did a lot of manipulation and things of that nature. So when they told me to leave and get out and I did that, they made this whole big ordeal. They called the police. It was just, it was crazy. And then the police told me like, you know, you can't leave unless you're 18. That's when you're actually an adult. So when I turned 18, I left. I left the school because I didn't want to be found by the person who was abusing me. I wanted to break free. And I knew that by breaking free that my siblings wouldn't endure as much as I'm enduring because maybe, well, that was my hope, you know, maybe they realized that, oh, she actually ran away from home. She dropped out of school because of me, you know, that's, that's what I thought would happen from that. So I ran away. I, you know, got my apartment. Um, I ended up getting married to this is at 18, right? This is at 18. I got okay. married at 18. Yep. <laughs> All right. Let's pause. Let's pause. Let's pause for a second. Let's pause for a okay. second. You, you know what you just did? You just did a lot of glossing. Okay. There was a, I know. There was, there was that was like a gloss fest. Okay. So let me let, let me point out one thing. Like, you know, I'm not trying to get you to have to dwell on, you know, painful experiences, but I did not know that you only met your father when you were 12 yes. and then, uh, and then he passed away a year later. I did not know that part. So what was the yes. reason why it took so long for you to get to meet him in the first place? My mother hid who my father was because she was ashamed of who my father was. And oh, wow. yeah, my, my father is much older. Well, he was much older than my mother. And even that story is just, it's crazy. Um, so she was ashamed of, of who my father was. So she didn't tell me, we didn't find out and go get DNA testing and all of that until I was 12. And I met him, but couldn't really see him, couldn't really visit him because the person who my mom left us with, she didn't approve of me seeing him or anything like that. She's very controlling. Um, so when you were growing up, did you not have any information about your father or did you think someone else was your father or like how was I mean this is this is uh yeah crazy to me <laughs> yeah I had no information of who my father was wow yeah my mom she was married so sometimes we would have the opportunity to go and like stay with my mom for short periods of time and the person that she was married to in my head I would say that he was my father but I didn't want him to be my father because he was very abusive to my mom. So, mm -hmm. you know, I had to go through that. And then I live with my grandfather, which I love him to pieces. And my grandfather is amazing. And so he has always been that father figure for me. But when I found out that I had an actual father, I was so happy. Like I, I felt like I knew who I was in that moment. And um, I also felt like there was a part of me that was now saved from everything that I'm going through because now my dad is here. And it wasn't until I was told like, you know, you, you can't see him unless I'm there or, you know, there was, there were so many things that the person that I was living with was, you know, putting so many stipulations on what was going on that I realized that, well, I thought there was no hope for me. I wouldn't see any way out. So I didn't have communication with him for a long time. Um, my mother was very toxic when it came to the relationship. She would tell me, you know, if she asked him for anything, he said no, or, they just got into an argument, whatever the case may be. She would always tell me like, your father doesn't love you. He doesn't care about you. And oh, mom, wow. yeah, the very last thing I've ever said to my father over the phone, I called him 
And I told him I was crying and I told him, I was like, I hate you. I hate you. And it's literally after my mom told me, you know, he doesn't love you, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, I hate you. I hate you so much. I started ripping up all his pictures. Um, He taught me how to play the piano over the phone. I threw the piano away. It was just so much. I was like, I hate you so much. And I didn't talk to him for about five months. And um, oh my gosh, in that, uh, after that five months is actually when I found out that he had passed away um, two months prior. So, oh, wow. So you only really had that one year to, you did meet him in person at some point, right? Yes. Did you get to meet him multiple times? And, and when, and when you met him, what was, what was that like? Oh man. (laughs) I'm getting getting all up in your business. You you can tell me to STFU whenever you want. No, (laughs) I love it. Honestly, you can ask questions about anything. I really am an open book, but (laughs) Um, yeah, I, I saw him a couple of times. So in, in the short time that I was able to stay with my mom, he would come over to the house. It's where he brought the piano. Um, he used to, uh, record everything on this huge, like cam recorder. I don't know what it's called, like a video recorder. He used to record videos and stuff. And so we would, uh, we, me and my siblings, we would take his camera and we would go play and record videos and, you know, we would do that. And I I saw him, I would say I probably saw my father a total of five times. And I think five is actually a stretch, but I did talk to him on the phone a couple times. I would say there's probably (laughs) maybe 10 times that I talked to him on the phone and five of those times were good. And then the other five were just, I hate you. Why would you do this? Why would you do that? And my father, every single time I called him, Oh my gosh, I'm getting emotional. <laughs> Every single time that I called him, you know, and and said like, oh, I hate you or, you know, why don't you love me? He would always, always tell me, you know, I love you. I love you. I know you're not mad. I love you very much. And he, every time he said it, I'm like, this is not the person that my mom is telling me that you are like, you know, it, it was just such a, a mind game on somebody so young. Like I was literally looking for a sense of self and I thought that I found it. And then it was like snatched from me. And then when he passed away, it just, I just literally um, went into a very, very dark place. I think, no, not I think, I know that when my father passed away, that was the very first time that I attempted suicide. It was the very first time. Was his passing unexpected? Uh, Yes. So to go a little bit more into the relationship with my father. So my father's side of the family did not like my mother. And when my mom found out who my father was and they went and um, we got swabbed, I guess my father started paying child support um, and he started paying child support out of something, not like the regular child support, but I guess out of his disability. And the only reason that I actually found out that he passed away, no one told me I didn't attend a funeral. When I did actually see the obituary, I was not listed in it, anything of that nature. I actually found out through the person that I was living with, the checks were going to them and they were like, whoa, you just got a huge increase. And they were like, that's not good. Cause at first I was like, oh really? Wow. And they were like, that's, that's not good. And so then they got in contact with people and then she found out and and then she told me that he had passed away. So yeah. Oh my gosh. I'm sorry. (laughs) So sorry to hear that. No, I, Listen, it's it's extremely tragic. I, I knew some of these facts before, but it just sounds like a tragic uh, BET lifetime, whatever, all, all, yes. all whatever. It's yes. it just. But but the reason I wanted to, I purposefully wanted to start out with where you are now, and I wanted to point all of that out, is because this is a um, success story in my yes. opinion. Um, mm-hmm. And I hate to, you know, pull at your heartstrings and make you go places you might not want to go. But the, the point is that, you know, inspiring people involves giving them a sense of familiarity. And, and look, I don't have any familiarity personally with anything that you just said, but right. other people, other people would. I, I come at it from a different perspective because just the other day I was talking to my dad because he's like, you know, my uh one of my closest friends, I can actually call my dad, my friend, and I lean on him to give me great advice. And I can't imagine my life without him. And that's what I pull from when it comes to your story. It sounds to me like, you know, you got connected too late as far as yeah. you're concerned and you didn't have enough time. And I can't imagine how 
painful that is. And so even after his passing, so then you still have to deal with some challenges. So yeah. <laughs> you got married at 18. Girl, I explain did. this to me, please. <laughs> so I started dating this guy. I started dating him when I was 16. We actually worked together um, in my very first job. He was the bagger and I was the cashier. Such a TV story, but it's true. I started dating him when I was when I was 16 and everything was great. It's your normal teenage relationship. And we would, you know, what is it called? I guess they call it like playing hooky with work. Like we would go to work sometimes and then we would say that we had to work. We would tell our parents that we had to work so we could get dropped off. And then we would go to the Chinese restaurant up the street and we would eat. And that would be like our little dates that we would have with, mm -hmm. you know, it was, it was really fun. And during that time that I spoke about where, you know, the person that I was staying with was like, you have to leave, you have to go. She was like, well, you better ask your boyfriend's family if you can stay there because you can't stay here. And, you know, and so I, I asked them and they said, yeah. So that's where I went. I actually went to his house. And when I did that, I was I was gone for about a week or so. But in that week, I went and I changed things over, like the check that I was receiving from my father. I took that um, because I still continued to get it until I was 18. But I took that and I went and we put our money together. We went to go get an apartment. And yeah, she didn't know that. I didn't tell anyone that. Only he and I knew that. Even his parents didn't know. But we went to go get our apartment. And yeah, when I turned 18, he came to my house in the middle of the night and I left. I, I left. I didn't tell my, my siblings. I didn't tell anyone. I just packed up. I wrote a note and put it on my bed and I never looked back. And so I thought I was sailing off into what was such a beautiful future ahead of me. And we got married a couple months later after moving in. So that was in February. We got married in May. And then I ended up uh, pregnant. <laughs> and mm -hmm. I had my daughter uh, the following year in April. So you're, um, you're 19 at the time. Yep. I'm 19 at the time mm -hmm. and I am very unhappy. <laughs> so I'm 19. I'm unhappy. I'm married. Are you unhappy because you you feel like you've got, you know, kids are an insane responsibility at any age, but did you feel like, you know, you couldn't go to the club <laughs> because you had a kid <laughs> and did you feel uh, unhappy in your marriage or was it both? Like, what was your, what was the source of your unhappiness at the time? Yeah. So I would say it's more so the second one. So I was unhappy in my marriage, honestly, before I found out I was pregnant. I was unhappy because the person that I was with consistently cheated on me. And I didn't find out until after I was pregnant that they did it, but they started acting different before I found out I was pregnant. Mm -hmm. So it just, you know, when I'm moving in, I'm like, yes, this is so great. I'm independent. I'm free. You know, life's going to be great. He loves me. I love him. And that's not what it was. It was, he started acting very different. I started taking on more of the traditional wife role. I was so happy, you know, to be free that I was like, I'm never going back. So I'm going to make sure that he's super happy. Like I'm cooking for him, cleaning, I'm doing everything. Like he doesn't have to think about anything. I'm doing it. And um, I found out I was pregnant. And then I found out by looking at his phone, not even going through it. He had a, a Palm Pilot and the notification was just like right there on the screen. But it was an old Palm Pilot digging in the crates. Yeah, got it. Yeah, seriously, I, I, had, right? I had one too with the stylus. And, yeah, yes, yeah. yes. Go, go he had the first one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I, I saw, you know, the girl said that um, she couldn't wait for him to come back. Um, he used to work nights. I didn't work. When when I moved out, I didn't work. I just collected the checks from my father. Um, and then I just sat on that and he took care of everything else and we split everything. But um, so he would work from 5 p.m. to 2 a.m. And I thought that he was working every single day as a full time job, but it was actually part time. And in the other times he was going to be with other women. Mm -hmm. And so. Um, I found out, confronted him about it, and that was my very first introduction to domestic violence with him. Um, oh wow! Yeah. So he wait. So let me get this straight. And uh, my my uh, my producer is going to get mad at me because I'm probably going to have to express myself in certain ways that are going to have to be bleeped. Um, so <laughs> he fucks up. Yes. And then gets mad at you for calling him out, yes. and then starts putting his hands on you. Yes. That was the first time. So what I started to do was not really mention it. 
Um, I would know that he was doing it, but not really mention it. Still tried to, you know, win him over. I was young. I, I didn't know anything about my. Oh, so you were trying to forgive him? Yeah, I was. I was like, I'm, I'm pregnant. We have a baby, you know. Mm-hmm. And and when we first found out that I was pregnant, he was super happy. But then after, you know, the domestic violence occurred, and you know, he would say things to me like, "Is it too late for an abortion? Is it?" Um, wow. Yeah, he would he would do certain things like he would if he got mad, he would just come over and like smother my face with a pillow. And he was just like, I just hope that you die. Like he would just do certain things. Oh, wow. And yeah, I was just like, oh, my goodness. And um, let, yeah. let me ask you a thought question. And maybe maybe it's a it's a hard question to answer objectively. But do you think that had you not been pregnant, it would have you would have easily left him or or were you? still hoping that you could make the relationship work? You know, to be honest, I don't think that I would have left even if there was no baby. And I I kind of feel like it's because of how I grew up. I grew up abused, like severely abused. And I know there's not levels to abuse, but it was we were severely abused. And so and just to be clear, from what I understand, it was from multiple caregivers. It, it, it seems like a, in your world growing up, it, there was a pattern of abuse from, from people that were in positions of trust that were supposed to be caregivers. And um, they broke that trust by, by abusing you. And please correct me if I'm wrong on anything I just said. Yeah. So the physical abuse was by one person. Mm-hmm. The, I would say mental and emotional abuse was absolutely from multiple people. I talk about it um, when I'm, I'm speaking on Clubhouse sometimes about how the person who would abuse us physically would take pride in the fact that they were, quote unquote, making us robots. They took pride in the fact that they were breaking us down into basically nothing, telling wow. us every day that we were nothing beating us until we like the one time that I remember I I got into a fight in school and um, I actually got jumped (laughs) in school and I was in the seventh grade. The fight wasn't my fault either, (laughs) but I remember getting jumped in school and I got suspended. And when the person that I was staying with found out that I was suspended from school, they beat me for three hours and I couldn't go to school afterwards. I was suspended for two weeks, which was good. I needed time for my body to heal. Immediately after that person finished beating me, my hands and feet were tied up with duct tape and they were beating me with an extension cord. Um, Jesus. Yeah, after after they took the tape off and let me go into the restroom to kind of like clean myself off, they actually told me that they did it because they loved me. And my mother was the one in the bathroom like helping me clean off. And it was just, it was crazy. Like that whole situation, just like knowing that my mother, the person who gave birth to me is in the other room the entire time listening to this happening and not stopping it. It's just ridiculous. So it's unbelievable. So help, help me bridge this gap between, you know, you're there, you're, you're, you're pregnant Mm -hmm. and and your man is cheating on you. And he's Mm -hmm. also not being the most supportive father or partner. And you, you got all of this trauma built up from your past. How do you bridge the gap between that happening and where you are now? Yeah, absolutely. So throughout all the... You, you, well, first of all, you know what? You know, I'm really curious because when I listen to your podcast with Cass, okay? Yeah. You guys are, you guys are giggling up a storm, okay? <laughs> you're, the, you're like the happiest. You're the most free-flowing... I can't reconcile the the, the horrors <laughs> that that yeah. have that you've been through, and you know the just joy that pours out on your uh, you know YouTube videos and and your podcast, whatever. So I'm trying to understand how you got here. Help me understand how you went from <laughs> from that point with your you're pregnant, your man's cheating on you, he's not being a great father, and you're you're dealing with all of this baggage, emotional baggage. How did we get from there to here? <laughs> yeah, so I would say, and thank you, for, <laughs> thank you for that. Um, I would say that honestly, I've always loved to laugh. So I used to love to go to school because it was my escape, 
And I would always be the class clown. I, I was always known for being a class clown. So I loved making other people laugh and making other people feel good because I did not feel good. So that's mm-hmm. always something that has been inside of me. And then throughout my life from people helping me with my domestic violence cases or people helping me when I needed clothes or anything like that. What, because even though I was married, he stopped doing things for me. So I needed to get clothes from people, things like that. Like I will always exchange something in return that made them feel good. So making people feel good has always been a part of who I am as a way to cope for what I've been through. And honestly, it's still kind of something that I do to this day. When I feel the worst, I give the most. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so mm-hmm. it's just something that I do. So yeah, once I basically from there to, to now, I basically just started looking at my skills um, because I wasn't working throughout that, that time. I started looking at what I was good at. And I actually took a job in customer service. So I went and started working for a call center and started talking to people and just hearing their stories on the other side of the phone. It became more than just a job for me. It wasn't just let me help you with your bills. It was listening to people say, you know, I'm, I'm just a student or, you know, my mom just passed away. I'm disconnecting her service or they're crying on the other end of the phone. And I'm just sort of like their counselor Mm-hmm. And I, I absolutely love that. And so it started from that to helping people with their ideas, you know, oh, I want to start a business, but I don't know what to do. And I'm like, I think that you should do this, you know, and then I started being known for that. And people like, oh, my gosh, I really need a job. I started helping out with that. So I started being known as like a resource in Cleveland uh, where people, you know, go to go to AJ, you know, if you need anything or she'll help you with this. So my phone would just be ringing off the hook. And so after I ended up leaving him, um, I ended up actually getting married again. <laughs> to oh, wow. Husband, I didn't sweetheart. know that part. Oh. Yeah. So I'm currently married. <laughs> You're currently married. Yes. Yes. When did you, when did you get married? I got married in 2015, January 15th, 2015. Okay. Now, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm confused. You probably know why, because I've listened to your podcast. I know. So, okay, so tell me, I'm not even going to say anything. Tell me, why am I confused? <laughs> <laughs> because I talked about being single. And it's because we did take a break. We did get divorced when we got remarried. So, <laughs> yeah. So when yeah. did you get remarried? We got remarried actually last year. Oh, okay. End okay. of last so- year. So the podcast, I think the last episode I saw was March of last year. So yeah. I wanted to get into like, why did you end it? It seemed like it was, it was pretty cool. But since that time, you have remarried. Yes. Okay. Yes, all right. We, so that makes we sense. We remarried. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So you, you, you listen to it. I'm glad you like it. <laughs> I just thought it was, you know, I, I try to do my due diligence and I just thought yeah. it was, uh, let's just say it was interesting. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I love the Cashly show. It's, it's amazing. But <laughs> yeah, so just to go into basically like the staffing part of everything, just to, to start there, because it all ties together. Mm-hmm. Um, like, like I mentioned before, I was working at the call center and I, I knew that it was just more in me. I ended up moving to Florida where I am now and I attended a job fair. And while I was at the job fair and I was speaking to someone else, there is a recruiter who walked up to me and was like, like oh my gosh, what, like what company do you recruit for? And I was like, oh no, I'm, I'm not a recruiter. I'm looking for a job. <laughs> and so they talked to me about it. And um, later on, I started looking up what it is to be a recruiter and I applied for a recruiter job. I've worked tons of recruiter contracts. I've worked for top companies in the U.S., um, all the top companies, basically, I (laughs) kind of worked for in some um, way, shape or fashion. And as a recruiter, I loved having the ability to change lives. It's not just a job. It's not just a place to work when Someone is going to work. This is what I've been hearing. And it's also what I experienced, even with just going to school. Sometimes that's a way of escape. And I look at employment as a way of escape to make your life better. So you spend more time at work, depending on where you work, you spend more time at work than you do home. 
So you want to make sure that the environment that you're going into is a great environment, one that you're getting compensated for your value, you're learning more, you're collaborating with wonderful people, and it gives you good work-life balance. So as a recruiter, I realized like, okay, yes, I'm placing people at these in these great positions. But then I also realized, you know, for one of the employers that I worked for the longest, that these positions are not so great. You know, I'm, I'm starting to get into, you know, what I don't want is hearing people's stories and hearing them excited, but me knowing the back end of this is not such a great position for you. This is not actually going to help you. This this company has high turnover, things like that. So I knew that there had to be a way that I could make a difference. And I didn't just want to be a freelance recruiter. I wanted to actually say, this is my business and I want to train and hire other recruiters to think like me, to have a heart to serve people and think of people as people and not just applicants. And so that's how I started Day Staffing Solutions. Um, I started it as a just a staffing company, but then I offered direct hire services. So that's what we do now is we offer direct hire services. And we also offer career coaching because um, I want people to understand the art of interviewing and looking for a job and understanding what they actually want to do in their job fields. And if they're unsure about that, that's basically what I help with. And, and then from there, um, we started moving into the business coaching. Once I had a good solid foundation for the staffing, then I moved into the business coaching, life coaching, and accountability coaching. And I did have a coach myself. Well, I do have a coach. <laughs> it's just a different coach now, but I did have a coach then. I had a life coach who was basically my everything coach, and they were helping me along the way. Okay. So there's a lot to unpack there. So I have some familiarity, you know, as an attorney, you have, we call them headhunters. You hire them and they, you know, you want to get out of your current legal job and then they go and try to find you another job, you know? Yes. So is, is, is there a difference between um, what you do and being called a headhunter? And secondly, does headhunter have a negative connotation? <laughs> so <laughs> there's a little difference. All of recruiting, staffing, the job market, all of it has a negative connotation with it. And that's fine. I still, to this day, I receive tons of pushback. There's people who say that, oh, I don't want to work with agencies. You know, there's a high turnover rate. And sometimes with headhunters, they're just trying to go out and grab anyone and have them fill a position just to throw them in it. And so. Right. Because that's how you yeah, get paid. Yeah, exactly. Right. So, yes, there's a similarity there. But here at Day Staffing, we don't do that. So I absolutely want to make sure that just going back from my past, my mother dropped us off at this person's house and we had to stay there. We were dropped into a terrible situation and I had to live with that. I don't want to drop people into terrible situations. That mm -hmm. is my motto. If I know that it's something that's not good, um, my recruiters, we turn down companies all the time who don't have good reviews after we check on Glassdoor, um, LinkedIn, when we speak with employees and we read reviews, we do turn down companies if they're not good work-life balances. There are cases where the companies that we reject do come back to us to help them improve processes and procedures and their interview panels and things of that nature. And we will assist with that, but we don't just place people at companies just for the sake of a paycheck. And on the other side of it, when I do find a great company that you know we want to work with or my recruiters find one that we want to work with, we don't just place any candidate. We want to find world-class talent. And we want the candidates who um, we speak with to feel like they are the best at world-class talent. They're in the top 1% of people who can do this job. And that's what, you know, that's where that value comes in at. So that's why when I invoice companies for 20,000 or 30,000 or $40,000 for one candidate, it makes sense. So that's mm -hmm. where that value comes in. It translates over into the business coaching that I have. I won't let you fail or watch you continue to go into a bad situation. I'm there to help you. I have my own resources, the things that I've been through. And I also have a powerful network behind me that can absolutely help you with anything that you need. And so um, that helps with that. And then life coaching, I went into life coaching because being a therapist would just I'm a, I'm a very empathetic person and 
with working with my therapist, I know that therapy is not where I need to be because emotionally I would be a mess. But with life coaching, you do get a you know a little bit of emotion with that, but more so I'm here to encourage you and stand by your side. And that's the same with accountability. There's really accountability in life coaching and business coaching. And so that's what I do. <laughs> okay. So um so I, I was gonna I was gonna you know let you plug your 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 company and your business and do all that at the end uh, and and we'll we'll still do that but uh all right <laughs> you you just went into it you're like um this is my value add and boom so just to put a pin on that commercial um <laughs> why don't why don't you I I want to know um do you charge the talent anything or do you only charge the companies that are looking to hire we have two different models. So we charge the companies who are looking to hire. So if we find a candidate, if we actually go out and find the candidate, then we don't charge the candidate anything at all. We only charge the company. We send them an invoice once we have an, um, a start date for mm-hmm. the candidate. A candidate is never charged. We do offer right. career coaching and you can work with my recruiters or myself. And then that's where a charge does come in. But yeah, not any candidates that we find for a position, they're not charged anything. Okay. Now, how did you become a CEO? It is one thing to deal with adversity in life and then be like, you know what? I'm a success now. I, I got a job. It's a good paying job. I'm paying my bills and I'm raising a family and I've got a new man and I'm great, whatever. But yeah. you went further than that. You, you did the scary thing of being uh, an entrepreneur and starting your own business. Yeah. How did you end up having the wherewithal and the mindset to actually take that leap to be your own boss, you know, given, given all the adversity that you'd face. That's what I really, that's, that's the connective tissue that I'm failing to understand so far. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So I'll go back to when I got married to my current husband, um, we were homeless. I had to, you know, let my daughter go and stay with a family member. And I just, I, I didn't want to keep living uh, that way. We would stay in our car. We would stay in a hotel. We just had a lot that we were going through and the money that we made, it just, it, it wasn't working out. I didn't feel good about what I was doing as a recruiter. I felt like there was something else that I could be doing. And the reason why, like looking back on it, that I was actually homeless for so long is because I felt like, well, since you dropped out of high school, you only had your GED, you don't have a college degree, so you can't get into business. You can't own a business because you don't know what it means. You didn't take any business courses. So Mm -hmm. that's what I thought, you know, I let that negative self-doubt get into my head and stop me from starting the business. But after a while, I, I don't know, literally something just clicked. And I said, I can do this better. I can help people. And I started to do my research. Shout out to YouTube University. (laughs) I started looking (laughs) on YouTube and I started, you know, Googling everything. And I found out how to actually register your LLC and just the, the basics. I started to Google and find out things for myself. And I would go to different networking events, the ones that were free because I didn't have money, (laughs) you know, go to the Mm -hmm. free networking events and speak to people. I would lie, (laughs) say that, you know, I I have a business. I'm just not sure where I wanted to go with it. You know, I would say that so I can feel good about being there. Make it to make it. Yes, I would just, (laughs) that's exactly what I did. I would literally fake it to make it. And I would get so much knowledge and so much information. And then I'm, Used all of that to start my business. So I started my business while I was working. And then after I felt like, you know what? I've made my very first placement. I have $10,000. I'm going to quit. And from that moment, I have been full speed ahead. So that was about, I would say 2017 actually, is when I was full steam ahead with what I was doing. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. So Again, I, I'm extremely inspired by uh, the fact that you persevered. You know, you, you told us about the suicide attempt. And I mean, it, it seems like there's nothing that life hasn't thrown at you. And here you are. Why Days? What I'm curious. What's, why, why the name Days? Staffing <laughs> so, Solutions. Yeah. So Days is actually the initials of my name and my, my family's name. So it's my husband's name, my name, and then our two kids because he has a daughter and I have a daughter. Okay. So it's their names all together. <laughs> okay. All right. Nice. I'm glad I asked. All right. Um, <laughs> so 
tell me about cats. I mean, you guys are, you know, the, the podcast has not issued a, uh, hasn't done another episode in like, you know, last year. Are you guys yes. still friends? Are you guys still working yes. together? Like, are you guys still doing is Cashly Co. together? What's up with Cass? And by the way, Cass used to be my rap name. When I was, what? When I was, in, when I was in a rap group in, uh, in college. So uh, my, my, this is all true. Okay. So my group was called the two timers, T Y M A S. And my name was Casanova. Ah. K-A- yeah. With a K K A double S A N O V A. I'm getting faded off the Alize. I'm eating tricks of all types of flavors. So they call me silly rabbit. OJ on that p- when I stab it. Oh. <laughs> yeah. And, and my producer's going to have to block out some of that, but uh <laughs> No, I love it. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. So my name was Cass Casanova. But anyway, uh, my girl, my girl's probably gonna kill me. Um, <laughs> I love you, baby. Um, so tell me, yeah, tell me about Cass. How look, we need more girl power. You know, what's yes. what's 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 going on with you guys right now in Cash Co? Yes, thank you so much for asking. And shout out to Cass. I love Cass. Cass is my best friend. We actually met online and that story itself is even crazy how we became best friends. But yeah, she's my best friend. And we used to actually Cashly, the Cashly show started out as an Instagram live that we would do every week. And people loved the Instagram live. And they they would say in the comments all the time, like, you guys need a podcast, you know, have you known each other for 10 years? Like they would ask, like, how long have we known each other? And it was just so funny that we we decided to start the podcast. And from there, like people loved it. Uh, we have so many episodes that we recorded that just haven't been put out yet. And that's honestly just due oh, wow. to okay. life. Yeah, we have we have um, a lot of podcast episodes that we have with certain artists and things of that nature, business owners um, that haven't been put out yet. And then we have ones that we record like the hot topics, like why are you single, things like that that we haven't put out yet, but we also have um, Cooking with Cashly, which is where we do, it's not necessarily just us, but we have chefs. So the TikTok chefs and Instagram chefs that you see, they have the opportunity to come on our show and it's a Zoom class that we do. And they actually teach people how to cook. We have meaningful conversations or just really like let your hair down conversations and you get to cook a good meal at the same time. So that's cooking with Cashly. So we've been focusing on that. We don't want to do too much at once, uh, but we both love food. We both love to cook. And yeah, <laughs> that's where we are with it. But the podcast is coming back. It is. You're, you're going to see us. We have so many different things that uh, we're working on and gearing up. But yeah, I, I love Cass. That's that's my girl. <laughs> I know you can tell like from listening to it. Like, I love her so much. Yeah, you guys are just like giggling up a storm. I'm like, um, <laughs> am I going to be interviewing like a middle school <laughs> or a, t- a teenage girl? Like, but you guys are just so like, you know, happy. And and then, and then, but then I were like, oh, okay, okay. So clearly they're adults when she start getting to some topics. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. Speaking of which, now I know that I know that you're a meatitarian like me because you 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 uh, <laughs> love a good steak. Yeah. Uh, and it's funny because a couple of episodes ago, I interviewed uh, you know a vegan and 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 talked about uh, all the pros and cons of of that lifestyle and the challenges and the differences between being vegan and this and that uh, and a vegetarian and blah blah blah. And I thought a lot of the arguments were compelling, but man, I can't give up that meat, man. I just can't. I just can't. Yeah, me either. I can't do it. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> um, and and from your Instagram page, you know, you, you seem very much like a foodie. And like you said, you've got the cooking with Cashly. So, hey, keep doing it. I mean, is that more of a creative outlet for you? Because the, the day staffing solutions is kind of like, you know, your daily jobby job that pays the bills and you need an outlet. Or do you find passion in both? That's a great question. That is a great question. So I absolutely find passion in both. And it's because the goal of Cashly Co. is to have a place where people can feel and become good humans. So it's a place where you can literally come, let your hair down, be celebrated. We are building um, community. So there's that's why I said Cashly has like so much more in store, but we're building a community of just all around good people. So we're 
We're going to offer, you know, different wellness things like yoga, meditation. And this is not something that we're just going to be doing. It's going to be our community of people who are going to be offering that and, um, you know, get connected with therapists and other life coaches and things of that nature where you can come and get some advice or things like that. But also, if you just want to really let your hair down and have a good time, you can come here for that as well. We celebrate you. It's just a really good space. And we want, you know, I'm not saying that other spaces are not like that, but this is without the negativity. Like you don't have to scroll through a feed of negative, negative, positive. It's like, this is all positive, but it's all real. It's all organic. And that's how our friendship works. And so we, people love our friendship. And so this is a way to give people a piece of our friendship. So I have passion for both. Well, I hear a lot of girl power there. And it's like, yes. I, you know, I've, I've told my girl more than once and she completely agrees with me. I'm like, the only reason, and this, this, is, this is intended to be a feminist, <laughs> female empowering statement, but I'll have to try to use my words correctly so I don't sound like a jerk. Um, <laughs> but I, 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 just, I just don't get why women don't run the world. I mean, men have a bro code. It's completely international. It's always existed. It's just out there in the ether. I don't know how I know it. I don't know how other people know it. When I, you know, I've lived in other countries, I've traveled all around the world. Every dude knows the bro code, everybody. And there is, as far as I can tell, there's no equivalent if females would just band together and have more girl power and support each other. You know, like when I, when I listen to your friendship with Cass, I'm just like, more of this, please, because you guys could run the world instead of, you know, when when women tear each other down, they're doing the job that men have already been doing for centuries. Right. So, True. you know, if you don't uplift each other because people in power, like, you know, men and particularly men, how can I put this diplomatically? Men who are uh, not men of color. OK, yes. <laughs> pigmentally challenged <laughs> men. <laughs> <laughs> they have no incentive to help yeah. out the ladies, right? So the ladies got to help themselves. And so I really, um, you know, was encouraged by your friendship with Cass. And I hope that you guys can spread that message as much as possible through the podcast and otherwise. That's just my two cents. There's, there's no question there. I'm just saying something. No, I, you know, I, I appreciate that. And that is something that we talk about, you know, that the girl power of it all. And, and I will say that there are a lot of great women owned businesses and there's a lot of great groups out there. I personally feel like it just doesn't get enough shine from people who are not um, women or supportive mm -hmm. of women. So it doesn't get the same recognition as if there are five men who go and start a business and do X, Y, and Z. And then if there are five women who start a business and go and do that same thing. So there, they are out there and we are looking to partner with more of those businesses but I do agree with you that women should support women more. That is something that we we could absolutely do instead of, and that's what we do in Cashly. So instead of saying like, oh, you know, you know, the little snarky remarks and things like that, or just not wanting to see someone win or offering your advice when you you could, that's not what we do here in Cashly. We're very supportive. We help each other because there's strength in numbers and we know that. So yeah, I, I totally agree with what you've been saying. <laughs> Well, I, I, I'm glad. And um, the the last thing I wanted to, <laughs> I don't, I don't know if you're gonna get mad at me or not, but I want, I really want to ask you. This is my last question. Okay. <laughs> How do I find your dirty songs that you sing? <laughs> oh no! <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh! You don't think I did my homework? Wait. How do I find these songs? <laughs> oh my gosh well your husband's gonna kill me where do i find these songs on the internet <laughs> so they're all unreleased right now i'm it's crazy that you asked that because i'm actually going to be putting together um i'm working on something and it'll actually be released on you know spotify itunes all of that this summer but for right now if you want to go and listen to my music <laughs> You can find it on an app called Boise. Um, it's V-O-I-S-E-Y. I believe it's how you spell it. Um, and you can download that. And then you can find me. My name on there is A-S-H, the number three, the letter L, the number three, and the letter Y. And that's me. 
Okay. He All right. Cautious. Well, I, I, I've only heard about the songs. I've oh heard what some of the lyrics are. I have not oh heard the goodness. songs themselves. So uh, I, I I purposely wanted to put you on blast. So everybody, <laughs> everybody check it out. And, no. uh, <laughs> so uh, on that note, is there anything else you'd like to promote or tell people about while you're here with me on the mic and let us know where they can find you on social media? Yeah, absolutely. So I actually just started an Instagram page for my business so that people could find me. So you can find me on Instagram at your coach AJ. That is my name. And you can click the link in my bio to find out about all the stuff that I'm doing. Um, if you need assistance with anything um, in regards to business, or um, if you want to learn how to own your own staffing agency, that is something that I do teach. So if you're interested in that, there's a link for that as well. Um, yeah, you can you can find me there. <laughs> Sounds great. Sounds great. All right. Well, look, I really appreciate you. And I, I wanted to say just in closing, I love the fact that therapy and life coaching came up so often in this interview, because I think particularly in the black and brown community, there's such a stigma against those things. But those, yes. you know, therapy and, and talking to somebody, there is no shame in that whatsoever. And I'm really trying to chip away at, at that that perception. It, you know, just talking to the right person can really help you cross that bridge uh, from being in despair to having some, you know, semblance of hope. And it's 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 such a powerful thing. And I'm glad that you brought it up so often. I wanted to end on that positive note. Yes, absolutely. I 100% agree with you. I wouldn't be where I am in my mind or profession if I didn't go and speak to someone, not just a friend, not just a, a family member, but speak to someone who actually understands the brain, how it works, how your emotions work. You know, someone who's certified or licensed, you know, I, I think that's something that everybody absolutely should do. At least just give it a try um, and, and kind of see where you go from there. So I, I totally agree with you. There you go. I mean, if your leg were broken, no one would judge you for going to see the doctor to fix your leg, right? Exactly. So it's, the, it's the same with the brain. And we need to we need to shout that message from the rooftops because yes. people, there's no shame in that game. All right. Yes, absolutely. All right. So listen, I, I really appreciate you so much. Thank you for a great interview. And I look forward to uh, witnessing your journey and wish you nothing but uh, as much success as possible because you've, you've come a long way, girl. So you do your Thank thing. you. I really appreciate that. I, I've enjoyed this interview. I love it. Thank you. Thank you so All much. Right. Well, so once again, we've got an interview that covered uh, so much territory. So yes, I could, for my fresh take, I could, you know, focus on all the adversity that AJ has faced and how she's come out of the darkness and into the light. Uh, we could talk about her entrepreneurial spirit, how she used her natural born talents to kind of figure out what she's passionate about and make a living from it uh, and how inspiring that is. But there is one theme that I don't recall in particular that we've really touched on before or, or delved into before, and that is girl power. Now, listen, ladies, okay, now I know that there there are some of you out there that uh, have uh, an X and Y chromosome. Okay, all right. This is this is for you too because I want you to listen up. All right, but ladies, us guys, we've got it made. We 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 always have been since the beginning of time. Like there literally has been no period of time where dudes haven't had it made because we've run everything. Okay, and I still believe that a large part of it is that we unite. All right. And, you know, of course, there are, you know, uh, especially, you know, guys get all uh, competitive and whatever to climb the corporate ladder and in sports, et cetera, et cetera. But there's always a universal brotherhood there that I just don't I don't know how it came about. I can't really describe it. But ladies, you guys have just as much of a chance, if not more, because you don't have all of our insane testosterone and that, all of that competition going on. OK, you have even more of a chance because of the unique gifts you have to come together and support each other and uplift each other and help close this gap in our society, whether you wanna talk about the wage gap or the laws on the books that oppress women or affect women and don't affect men at all, anything out there that prevents you from fulfilling your best self and being your best self, okay? Because we've got basically no incentive to do it, all right? 
<laughs> so you have to look inward and lift up yourselves, both individually and collectively. And I'll, I'll even go so far as to say this. OK, let's say you're a business owner and you can hire two people. One's a guy, one's a girl. And really, there's really no differentiating factor. They're both very well qualified. And, uh, you know, you get along with both of them great, or at least you, you think you would. They both interviewed great. You just have to make a decision. Look out for your sister. Go ahead. There's no shame in that. I'm going to be I. Right, OK, <laughs> if I'm the dude, I'll be just fine. OK, believe that. All right. So listen. Get together. We've got social media. We've got clubs. You guys can you guys can have support groups. You can talk to each other. You can have fun with each other. You can be like AJ and her girl and 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 laugh together and just spread that joy, that girl power all across the airwaves or all over social media. And just look out for each other. It's that simple. So I would encourage that. And particularly as I have, you know, a younger sister who I love tremendously. And I see her rising up in the ranks through her own entrepreneurial spirit and her drive, et cetera, et cetera. And I love the way that she dedicates so much of her energy to uplifting other women. So that is my fresh take. I hope I didn't say anything on PC. Hey, but you know what? That's just fine with me. I'm just trying to be supportive, y'all. All right. <laughs> Thank you for listening in on yet another episode of The Fresh Mix. Please tune in again soon. I look forward to hearing from all of you. For details and show notes about today's show and our guest, go to freshmixpodcast.com. I'd really love your feedback, both on today's guest and on my fresh take. The Florida Podcast Network has a closed Facebook group exclusively for super fans of their shows like Florida's Fresh Mix. So we all look forward to hanging out in there with you. Just search for FPN Insiders on Facebook and leave us comments, get early scoops, contests and other special treats. Or you can just complain about Florida's, I don't know, holiday weekends. I mean, it's probably not like this everywhere in Florida, but where I live in Miami Beach, we can't even enjoy our holiday weekends because all of you guys that live in, whether it's urban areas or the so-called flyover states, always congregate in my town. I can't even go to the beach. What's up with that? Aren't there fun things to explore in your town that you haven't done yet? You can have a nice, you know, staycation. Why do you got to come to my town? Why? <laughs> But anyway, be sure to visit all the great shows on the Florida Podcast Network. You can find them at floridapodcastnetwork.com. Keep catching Who's Fresh and the Florida Mix with Florida's Fresh Mix podcast.